When should someone quit their job to become a filmmaker? As soon as you can, you know, because, I mean, think about it, like, you know, what the rule of thumb is, you know, it takes 10,000 hours to master your craft. And the longer you take to get those hours, the longer it's gonna take to really kind of get a handle on this. Because directing takes a lot of time. It takes a, many, many, many years to like really understand all the aspects of the business. So I know at first it could be a challenge, you know, because you're fresh out of school or whatever. But as soon as you can get, I know when I first started, it was really hard for me because I was working, I was working at a computer repair center. And I knew that every hour I was spending there is one hour I was not spending on set or writing or whatever. Um, Windows 95 you were working on? Or what? I believe it was. <laughs> I, that was where I saw my first one gigabyte hard drive. So like, but I remember sitting in the, the break room at lunchtime. I would sit there and I'd look out the window and I'd see all the cars going past me, knowing they're all going somewhere and I was not. Um, you got to get out of that as fast as you can. Find some way to make a living in this business as quickly as you possibly can. Even if it's PAing on... A, you know, some big whatever on the smallest movie ever. You're practicing. At least you're on the ladder. At least you're, you're observing filmmaking. Even if you're catering, you're on the set. And you're watching the action. It doesn't matter. Get there somehow as fast as you possibly can. Before school, even. While you're in school, even better, you know. I mean, there's, there's people who have interned for me who are high school students, which I'm like, man, I wish I could have done that in high school. It would put me so far ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you can find a way to make a living in some aspect of this industry, do it. How'd you leave that job? Uh, it was, I got to a point where I just couldn't do it anymore. I, it just hit a breaking point. Like I had, I had to go and I saw it wasn't even an opportunity. It was just someone suggesting I move to a new city where stuff was being made. And so abandoning all, I went. And it started my life. Like it, it was worth it. It was hard because I had no friends. I was on the other, literally on the other side of the country, diagonally from where I was. And I, it changed everything. Got it all started. So. Did you ever think, oh, I should have stayed there Never. for like a, just a, the first week? Not once. Uh -huh. Not once. It. Uh, yeah. It's that's the thing about. There's terror in moving place, you know, it's relocating to another city, leaving everyone behind. There's a fear in that. But you know, as soon as you do it, even when you land, it's usually like, yeah, I, this is a good thing. Um, you know, that's usually the question for LA. For a lot of people, should I move to LA or whatever? And that's the, that's the fear that you're going to regret once you get there. Um, I don't know. I feel like most people don't. A few leave, but I feel like most people probably don't. Um, you know, I should say something about L.A., the L.A. mentality, the L.A. thing. Everyone who doesn't live in L.A. probably on some level asks and wonders if they should live in L.A. L.A. is not the answer to everything. It all depends on what you want to do. Um, there is this funny belief. This is what I hear people say a lot. Oh, I'll come to L.A. when I need to. They'll say that. And they'll say, I'll fly in for any meeting. Now that is predicated on this belief that the break comes down to the meeting. Well, that's, okay. at the end, that can be where it happens. You know, you have the meeting that changes everything. But what you're, you're not realizing is, is that there's a buildup to that. It's a who you know industry. Um, and if you're trying to get into those upper echelon of work, you have to know the right people. And it, that is not at the meeting. That happens at someone's birthday party. That happens at, you know, I, met, I went to play paintball with a buddy a week ago and I met uh, several industry people that could totally make my career, you know, a week ago, like at paintball. Like that's not the kind you're going to fly in for, right? That's, that's the importance of relationships. And um, believe me, it matters who you know. I don't care how talented you are. If you don't know anybody, your road is going to be long and hard. Someone asked me once a long, long time ago if they thought I worked. They said, do you think you've worked harder than J.J. Abrams? And that was a tough question because I was like, and I didn't live in L.A. at the time. 
And I thought, no, I don't think I have. I, I think that we've probably both worked very hard, just as hard, because I work very hard. Well, then what is it about him that puts him where he is and me where I am? Well, his dad was in the industry and he was editing home videos for Steven Spielberg when he was in high school. That he was groomed to be where he is. Now, I'm not saying he didn't earn it. He's worked very hard, clearly. He's very good at what he does. But he knew the right people. That is, that changes your career right there. You have to live, if you want to be in those upper echelons of things, you better live here. If you're fine with not working in that, then you don't have to come. That's kind of what it comes down to.